Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to our weekly recap video where I'm going to take all of last week's videos and answer some questions from those. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about before we get into the questions was I wanted to announce the winners of our bulb giveaway with color blends. Um, that was part of our big bulb planting video, which I'll get into a little bit more later, but we're giving away with color blends two uh, groups of 100 bulbs, two groups of 200 bulbs, and two groups of 500 bulbs. So there were six winners total. We picked three from Facebook and three from YouTube. So the three winners from Facebook are the winner of 100 bulbs is Carrie Dominguez. Winner of 200 bulbs is Vicki Peller Hafler. Hafler. Winner of the 500 bulbs is Sheila Haas. So congratulations to the three of you. The winners from YouTube are 100 bulbs to Gwyneth Gaspari. Winner of 200 bulbs is Kathy Min, and the winner of 500 bulbs is Felicia Bell. So thank you to everybody who commented on this video and kind of shared what you were doing and what you know you wanted for your yard. It was really fun to look through all those comments and um, just see how many of you guys are excited about bulbs because I'm really excited about bulbs really really excited about bulbs all right so let's get right into the videos first one was planting hydrangeas fixing the chicken coop and planting a couple of pots so in that video i just kind of reinforced which the chicken coop is right behind me i reinforced the area right under the door by putting hardware cloth down so nothing could dig under there i also put pavers in i planted a couple of not a couple three hydrangeas firelight hydrangeas in our brick raised bed circle area um, and then uh what else did i do I planted a couple of pots. Which pots did I plant? Good oh, I forgot. It's been a long week. Annie Love asked, silly question, but would you be willing to show coop and chicken care? And it's something that I do plan on doing. I keep saying that there's little details I want to button up, and there are. Like, I am planning on having a automatic door installed. I just ordered it this morning, in fact. Um, and I did lose a few chickens this past year, and so I just, I kept feeling like I wanted to, like, kind of get everything to where it was running smoothly before I started sharing about it. Um, I didn't lose them to predators. Uh, it was just some random things that happened. Um, like, one of them got kind of caught in one of my nesting boxes somehow I don't even know how it happened and then I think and I actually had a couple of really like um, knowledgeable chicken people come out because I lost like a bunch of them right at the same time and they started to limp and then they died and I, they think it was coccidiosis which I think is when they get I don't know they eat their own feces I don't know what the deal is but they like looked my coop over everything is cleaned out on a really regular basis so they were even like I don't even know if that's what it is like it doesn't make any sense so anyway I had a little bit of issues this year I have four very healthy hens going into winter I was going to amp up my flock before winter but then I thought I would wait till spring till it's warmer out and I don't have as much to worry about and these chickens have a lot of room in this coop now so we will do a coop care video everything's going really well and has for the last few months so um, I'm hopeful. Ruby asks, and this is not garden related, but I get this question a lot. What eyeliner do you use? It is CoverGirl Ink It. Peggy, uh, the hydrangeas are going to be gorgeous in that spot you were talking about winter interest. I would love if you would do an evergreen tour for us this winter or late fall. I actually never thought about that. That's a really good idea. There are areas where I could show you like check this out like this needs evergreens this area is not done yet and then there are other areas I look at and I'm really happy with so that might be maybe that's a good idea to do here just like we're about ready to lose all of our leaves we've had horrendous windy days this last weekend and so most of my leaves are gone so maybe that will be soon sweet Kalita asks I was wondering if you would do a video showing how you blow out your drip system we're actually planning on filming that video tomorrow so it won't come out tomorrow it'll be in a couple of days um, but it's coming soon hold on Richard says given the amount of mulch you use why not have it trucked in and avoid plastic bags that is a very good point and it's something we've been talking about a lot um, we thought that next year we would probably have more bulk mulch brought in just because we have a better system now um, the reason why I've used bagged mulch up to this point is because it's easier for me to move around it's a lot quicker and more efficient because I can move the bags myself I don't have to get it in the truck and then shovel it into a wheelbarrow and then bring it out to the area and shovel it again all I have to do is grab the bag and pour it where I want it to be um, so it is very efficient especially around a lot of plantings a lot of perennials and stuff because it's just it's easier um, but this next year we do plan on doing a lot more bulk what is the name of that lollipop evergreen tree behind you at the opening of the coop Which you can probably see right now it's a serbian spruce i got two of them i picked them up actually at the home depot early this spring and i've loved them they've done great 
Krista Bossy, Bossy Pants says, since the repellent is labeled for birds, does it bother the chickens? It does not seem to bother the chickens one bit. I kind of thought about that a little bit, but it's a perimeter barrier and I've got it, you know, it's a little bit away from the base. They don't seem to be bothered at all. They're still scratching around right along the base. That's like one of their favorite things to do is like to weaken the sides of the, the coop. They go along and they scratch all the stuff from underneath my runner board. Um, so anyway, it doesn't seem to bother them. Kristen says, when in doubt, hydrangea it out. Yes. Since these firelights bloom on new wood, do you think it's possible to keep them a bit smaller than their full size when you prune them up each year? I actually do think that it is possible. However, I do want to explain that with hydrangea panicula paniculatus and arborescence, they bloom on new wood, which means you prune them up in late winter, early spring when they start to bud up. Uh, it's best not to cut them back too hard because you really want to create a strong woody base at the bottom of your plant. And if you keep cutting it back really far, like I know some people who cut them all the way back to the ground and let them come back fresh, but that new growth isn't hard and woody. It's more soft and pliable. So if you've got big blooms on it, on your plant, they can tend to weigh down the branches and make them look kind of flopped over. Um, so the rule of thumb is to only prune them back by about a third of their total size which will create eventually that nice woody base to keep your plant like upright and looking beautiful. But if you're starting with a small hydrangea, which most of us are, and you keep pruning it by a third every single year, it's never really going to get to that full mature size. My chickens are going nuts. Hey, pipe down pipe down back there because you're not giving it enough time to grow to that size. Like if you were to leave it alone for a couple, three years and it just kind of like it grew really big, it'd be a lot harder to get it back down to the size you want. So just keep up on a good pruning regimen and I think naturally you'll keep them smaller. But I do recommend that in any area you pick out a, a hydrangea that's like properly sized so that if it did get to mature size, it would be okay. Moving on to the next video, the succulent treehouse fairy garden. This was really fun. I just put together a fairy garden full of succulents and cacti. Jonathan asked, uh, Laura, you said you deconstruct these. Will you do a deconstruction video? Uh, that's a great idea. In fact, most of the fairy gardens I put together, and I explained this at the end of the video, I don't know how many of you guys saw it. So we did the sped up part of the planting, and then at the very end, I kind of like talked through um, all the stuff, like all the things about all the plants and how I take care of them. Um, and so they're seasonal for me. I reuse so many of the plants and the, um, and the, pieces, thank you, um, that are in those fairy gardens that, you know, I just am like constantly recycling and putting together new stuff. So maybe I'll like give it a month and then take that apart and show you guys how I do that and we can make something new. Clint asks if we're going to sell the cup that I had my coffee in, which is a lavender colored coffee mug that I wish I had right here next to me right now. Um, so those were actually made by Heather Jackson, who runs the Garden Answer Groupies Facebook page. She asked if she could have a few made for an event that they were holding in Michigan that kind of involved some of the people who are involved in that page which is awesome and amazing Heather does an amazing job um, but the reason why we don't offer them in our merch um, I think we have got just the ceramic coffee mugs right now is that Teespring doesn't offer them and we go through Teespring for all of our merch right now and they don't have a super wide selection of stuff I mean we've been happy with what they've done so far uh, but it's really hard for us to or we or like trying to think through how we could order stuff like that in and like ship them out from here. We just don't have the staff for that right now or the time. Um, so it's something that definitely we'd like to do in the future. Shannon says, this is unrelated, but will you be doing one of your garden gift idea videos? Oh my goodness. So we have seen quite a number of messages come through just recently about that, which is so much fun for me. I always love to know that those kind of videos are helpful for you guys. I mean, they're fun for us to do. I, I love to put them together, um, but only if it's helpful. Like I don't want to continue doing stuff that you guys don't like. So anyway, we are planning on doing another one. In fact, we may be filming that one here pretty soon. I'm excited about it this year. Forest Warrior says, hey, where do you get all of your music? I love it. So it's from a website called Epidemic Sound. And the reason why we use mu music from there and we do pay for it um, is that we tried to use music from other places and we kept getting copyright claimed. And we've never had that problem with Epidemic Sound, which is awesome. So yes, we do pay for it, but it's definitely worth it in the end. We have started to link to it in the description below. I Waffles asked, was wondering if you guys had considered starting a Patreon for your channel. Um, so it's definitely something we've talked about. We've seen other channels do it and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it but we are thankful that at this point we don't feel like it's something we need to do it may be something in the future we need to do you never know but we just feel like we have such a great balance of things going on right now like the companies we work with are wonderful we've been working with them for a long time and you guys are just amazing and supportive and watch our videos which is huge and we wouldn't be here without that 
whatsoever. So thank you guys for watching our videos. And I feel like, you know, our channel is pretty family friend friendly. We don't really go into anything that's, um, controversial. controversial. Um, so, you know, our, the ads that play are good ones. Um, and we never get demonetized, which is really nice. So, I mean, <laughs> knock on wood, but yeah, we feel like it's just going really well right now. So you never know. Next video was we planted 3000 bulbs, which was like, I was kind of dreading that video just a little bit because bulb planting can be such a pain. But I had helped this year, Chris, who's helping us outside with a lot of maintenance stuff. He helped me and was invaluable in the process. Like it would have taken me a whole week to do all of those bulbs, like to get them in the ground. And it took us just a couple of days. Um, and one area we actually dug up and did again. <laughs> because I felt like I planted them too close together and then I laid in bed that night and I'm like, those tulips, they're too close together. We got to dig it up. And Chris was probably like, oh my gosh, but we got it done. It was raining hard on us the whole time we did that. But um, anyway, first question is Bonnie. I'm having a hard time remembering exactly where I planted my bulbs. How do you keep track so you don't dig them up when planting perennials and more bulbs? Um, so first off, making videos is an excellent way to journal where everything is at in your garden. Like it is so great. Every once in a while I have to watch a video back and be like, what did I put right here? I swear I planted something. Uh, and so that's very helpful. I actually don't keep an actual garden journal anywhere. I don't write anything down. I at one time saved tags, but that was back in our old house where I had a much smaller garden. Um, so now videos kind of serve as my garden journal. Um, but for bulbs, I typically like to plant bulbs in areas that I have pretty much planted up completely like with shrubs and perennials like everything's in place and then I can plant bulbs around those things rather than planting all your bulbs and then deciding to go in with perennials and stuff and then you disrupt where your bulbs are which I do as well I mean it just it happens like underneath Hebe I planted a bunch of white bulbs that are gorgeous um, and then I went in and planted some perennials in there and I dug up I think I dug up a total of 20 bulbs while I was in that process I just planted them again it's not a huge deal but it's nice to not have to do that. Gal Cool Gal asks, how do you get into the boxwood cutout? So the boxwood hedges in our back formal garden where we planted the alliums, there is no good way to get into that area. I mean, if if one wanted to get a couple of step ladders and put one on the inside and one on the outside, you could make the transition a lot easier. I just take a fly and leap over the boxwood hedge and hope I don't break any boxwood branches on my way in. So far I've had pretty good luck. I like try to find the thinnest spot in the boxwood hedge to do it. So anyway, so far so good. Uh, Dee Dee asks, I can't help but wonder how you plan for which bulbs to go where. Do you visualize the type of flower and color you wanted in each area? Um, I planned for about half of the bulbs that came and the other half I was like, ooh, where are these gonna go? Like I know I want them somewhere and it's easy to find spots, especially if you're doing, like here, our flower beds are pretty good size. So to, to tuck a hundred bulbs into a flower bed is fairly easy. So I wasn't really worried about it. I always like to have a plan for the tulips that come in the big amounts. Um, so like the uh, Vidal tulips and the Gamay tulips, I knew where those were gonna go because those come in like 600 and 500 increments. Um, but the smaller amounts, I don't worry about so much. Luigi says, um, why do you need to plant so many bulbs? Don't the bulbs that you planted the previous years come back? Or are you just adding bulbs to areas that you haven't planted on before? Uh, so bulbs here in our zone five are usually pretty good to come back. Um, but there's a lot of space that there was not bulbs. There's still quite a bit of space that there isn't bulbs. So every year, and I may not always do this amount of bulbs every year, um, but every year I want to add a little bit more here and there to where in the spring I just have this glorious, glorious show. And we're making good progress to that end. Um, I think it's just going to get better and better every spring. Chantel asks, will you be cutting back your hydrangeas or do you wait until spring? So I don't do any pruning on hydrangeas until late winter, early spring when the buds start to swell because then you can see where your good strong buds are. You can also see if there's any dead branches you need to remove. And the only hydrangeas I prune, period, are paniculated and arborescent varieties. So macrophyllas, serratas, uh, chrysofolias, I do not prune any of those. I usually site those in an area where they can grow to their full size. And the reason for that is that those three types of hydrangeas, for the most part, there are some exceptions, but they bloom on old wood, which means they formed their flower buds for your current year on last year's growth. So they were forming their buds during the summer and fall of last year. So if you prune them in the spring or really at any time, it's just not a good time to do it because you could possibly cut those blooms off. Um, but your paniculata and arborescence bloom on new wood, which means they're just continually producing new buds um, throughout your current growing year. So, you know, even if you prune them in the spring, you'll still get blooms. 
Next video was planting more bulbs in our entryway containers. So we have two big black square containers that we had just recently cleaned out of the summer annuals because we had a really cold night. It got down to 21 and all of them just looked they looked bad so it's time for them to go we put fresh soil in the pot and then i packed them full of tulips and daffodils and muscari i hope that they do well in there um, bernadine asked can i plant a similar pot if i li live in the deep south louisiana so i don't know what zone you are but i'm guessing it doesn't get cold enough for you and bulbs need a certain vernalization or cold period in order to form their their blooms for the next year um so like i think tulips need between mm, is it 14 and 16 weeks of cold uh hyacinths need between 10 and 12. Anyway, each bulb needs a little bit different. Crocus need only eight to 10 weeks. Um, so if you are in a zone that stays too warm, you have to force them yourself, which means you need to get your bulbs and put them in a refrigerator or a cold enough area to where they can have that amount of time. And then you'll plant them out in the spring instead of planting them in the fall. Uh, Debbie says, do you add any fertilizer or bulb home to areas where bulbs are previously planted? I've always wondered if you'd get more blooms if you do. Well, I certainly have great luck with my bulbs using bulb tone. I mean, you guys have seen the show over the past couple of years of what our bulbs look like. And I have bulbs like tulips that are naturalizing. Like the ones I planted around the urn, I planted 90 tulips, which in that area I could have planted double or triple that, but I spread them out and I'm kind of glad I did because uh, the first year I had like one or two blooms off of the one bulb I planted. And then now I'm getting like seven to nine uh, blooms per that one bulb that I planted and they're starting to spread out. So did I say those were called Cafe Noir tulips and they're doing amazing. Okay, that was not, <laughs> that was not the point of the question. The question was about fertilizer. So I always throw bulb tone in the hole when I plant because all we're really concerned about is root growth and the roots are still working even in the winter time. So you may think it's unnecessary to do it and some people just don't. Um, and I mean, either way you wanna do it, I just have good luck using it. So I toss that in the hole and I plant my bulb, but that's the only time I do fall fertilizing for bulbs is when I plant. Um, in consecutive years, what you'll do is after the bulb has bloomed, you'll go in and fertilize. Um, so like this next year, all the new bulbs that I planted and put fertilizer in the ground, I probably won't fertilize those in spring, but all the ones I've had from previous years, I will fertilize all of those after they're done blooming. And then that will be my schedule from there on out. Natalia says, how much space do you leave between each bulb and how deep do you plant them? So the tags always have that information. Like for daffodils and tulips, I think it's five to six inches deep. Um, and then I can't remember spacing. Is it like four to six inches or something like that? But the tag will say, I always plant mine closer together when they're in containers. It just works better that way for a really nice dense show. In the landscape, I give them usually the space that they need. Melissa says, how do you keep the square squirrels out of those bulbs do they mess with the bulbs in your landscape too so they haven't we do have squirrels they have not messed with any of my bulbs yet and i think that's because we had all the oak trees with tons of acorns like they were very well fed but we don't have those oak trees anymore so i don't know what's going to happen i haven't seen squirrels messing with anything yet um, so we'll see, but you could use something like Repelzol. Um, you could put that bait down, or it's not a bait, it's a repellent. You can put that down in areas where the bulbs are to keep the squirrels out. You could also put down like a chicken wire or something like that to just like prevents them from digging period in your flower beds. Joanne says, uh, what happens to the bulbs when you plant the summer display? Don't you disturb the bulbs or is it your plan to just leave them there for one year? So all of my bulbs I plant around. Um, so typically they're deep enough in the ground where I can dig my holes for my annuals and I don't hit them. Um, every once in a while I can see one down there, but somehow like the annuals don't disrupt the bulbs. I like when I pull the annuals out, they don't pull bulbs out with their roots. Um, the ones in containers that I'm planting this year, we, some of them will end up in our landscape. Um, so I will replant them. They're all, I don't treat any bulbs as annuals here. Uh, any of the other bulbs that we don't plan on saving, we usually open it up to family and friends and just say, Hey, come and grab these bulbs. Um, we planted them in containers. We're done with them. We don't have a space in the landscape. Do you want them? And so we usually get uh, takers to come take the bulbs. Hi, Mountain Mama says, how do you keep the bulbs from freezing and killing uh, the bulb? I live in Eastern Idaho and you can't put anything in a container as it'll freeze them and they don't bloom, which the ones in the grounds do fine. Uh, you know, it's always a risk when, you pl when you're planting in containers. If you have the ability to move your containers um, into a protected area and plant them there and then move them out in the spring, that's always the best idea. Um, but I did plant um, some urns and my front planters out where I can't move those planters. They're just too big and too heavy. So I'm packing them full. I'm making sure that they don't ever dry completely out 
and I'm just hoping that they do well. Um, you know, we'll see in the spring what happens, but you can't really predict what a winter is gonna be like. So the two containers up front though, I just wanted to mention that they are double walled. There's an air insulation layer between the sides. So it does provide a lot of extra insulation for your plants. So I'm hoping that that's helpful with the bulbs. I did plant in some concrete planters that are pretty thick and that also helps. If you were planting bulbs in like thin walled metal or plastic containers, that would be iffy. Ruby says, you mentioned that you took down the hay rack baskets. Do you have any recommendations for storing hay racks or hanging baskets during the winter? So what we did is we took them down. We cleaned out all the soil from last year, all the fi uh, cocoa fiber liners, which we've used them for two years in a row. They, most of them looked good still. So we just are storing them in stacks in our barn. Um, just empty. Uh, Davris or Davris Life, uh, have your parents thought about offering an online store? So they actually do. It's andrewseed.com. We'll link it down below. Right now, because they've just started it, they offer some of their best-selling bulk seeds. Um, so a lot of the seeds that we grow in our own gardens are available on their online store. And I think they're going to put Christmas ornaments up on there this year. Um, but they're just starting it. They're just getting going. So if you want to check it out, awesome. That would be great. Um, but they do hope to amp it up here over the next few years. Maggie asks, what is that green little man in the background? So that's actually a slow children's sign. It blew over in the wind. I don't know, was it standing upright in that video? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, we put that out there because we have a lot of traffic coming through our driveway all the time, like FedEx, UPS, just people coming and going all the time. Um, and Benjamin loves to be outside. So we've got actually a couple of signs that say for people to go slow and watch out for kids. Allie asks, can you do a video about how you stay organized with your garden information? Like how you remember to water certain things and how you remember what you've planted and how well it did. What do you think about that, Erin? You don't. <laughs> I don't. I am like the most unorganized person ever. I hold most of it in my brain. And like I said earlier, um, our videos serve as a great garden journal just to like look back and see what I've done previous years. But we've gotten better over the years. Whenever we put a new plant in the ground, we run drip to that plant right then. Like it's not something, like, eh, occasionally it happens to where I forget to run drip. And then I look out at a shrub I've planted and I'm like, oh dang, that shrub is dead. <laughs> I, I forgot to put drip to it and then I forgot to water it. It happens with the amount of stuff we put in the ground, but most of the time we run drip right away so that we don't have time to forget about it and then things just do a lot better. Um, okay, and I think this is the last video. Uh, this was a little bit different for us, but the pesto chicken pasta, we worked with Analon on this video and we are doing a cookware giveaway, which we haven't picked winners for yet. That'll be soon, probably this week sometime. Uh, Marsha asks, uh, I'll give this a try. What type of, and brand of knife were you using? It looks like a good one. That's actually an Analon knife as well. They sent out a knife set that's got four different knives and I've been really enjoying them. Paul says, why didn't you use tomatoes and basil you harvested a couple weeks ago? Have they been used or go bad? They have been used. <laughs> so it's, like I said, it's like 25 degrees out here right now. We've had nights, um, like, have we had nights in the teens yet? Was it 19 last night? 20s, I think. Really? It's pretty cold here now. So of course, all the stuff in our garden is shot. Um, and so I mentioned in the video, like I use store-bought tomatoes and basil, but I mentioned about how I made that recipe all throughout the summer using my own stuff out of the garden. And it's just even better when you can do that. Um, so anyway, yeah. Uh, so Gazala or Gazela asks, are you going to be making more cooking videos? And we probably will here and there. Like we'll definitely keep our channel very garden focused. And the only recipes I would probably venture to share on this channel are those which could relate to the garden in some way. But basically I like to do videos of the projects I have going on and, and things I'm excited about. Um, so if I get excited about a particular recipe and think that you guys might like to see it, we'll probably do a video about it, but it'll be few and far between probably. Uh, Kim said, did you oil the grill pan? And I did not. Those are nonstick pans. And um, I have used that pan several times and have never sprayed it. Uh, Rima, is that a five quart or an eight? 0.5 quart Dutch oven that you cook the pasta in. It was 8.5 quarts. What brand is your mini food processor? It's a Cuisinart. It was actually a gift to me from Aaron's parents one Christmas a long time ago, and I use the heck out of that little food processor. I actually don't have a full-size food processor. Christmas list idea. All right, guys, so that's it for this week's weekly recap video. I hope it was helpful to hear some answers, and thank you guys so much for all the comments, suggestions, questions that you leave. Um, just a reminder that the Analong cookware giveaway is still going on, so go to YouTube, watch that video, um, and then make sure to comment so that you're entered in on that giveaway because it's a good one. I'm really enjoying my set. So that's it. Thanks, guys. Hope you have an awesome week. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.